Hi, Paul Wakefield here from paulwakefieldmarketing.com. Now, as promised, uh, here is the uh, first follow-up uh, video um, in regards to understanding exactly what social media is, is about and, and obviously how it can benefit your business. Now, obviously, for the last few years, working with uh, small to medium local businesses, um, I'm always getting asked, to be fair, pretty much a similar sort of question. So, uh, as I said in, in the previous video, I will be making uh, quite a few videos explaining various different things um, on social media. So, yeah, welcome back. I hope you enjoy this, this short video that uh, I've got for you today. Um, as you can see here, we're starting off understanding the value of social media buzz and what it can do for your business. Now, I thought, I thought this is probably very important because there's still a lot of people that are very skeptical about it. So sit back, put your feet up, uh, enjoy the next five, 10 minutes or so. And um, yeah, let me try and explain this in a, a little bit more detail. So as you know, these days, social media is the buzzword in marketing and a global trend that has gotten everyone, absolutely everyone of every age engrossing one, two and possibly even several social media sites and absolutely everyone is on it in one form or another. But the killer question, what exactly is it? And this is where people are still getting very much confused. So, social media explained in plain English. And I really hope this helps. Okay, the term social media has been carelessly tossed around and used too often in online marketing. But what is it really all about? Well, in essence, social media incorporates the use of online technologies and methods that allow people to share personal opinions, content, as well as swap insights and perspectives with the rest of the world. Social media content can take different shapes and forms. What do I mean by that? Well, text, for argument's sake, um, often used to write or put across personal opinions or posts. Images, photos are used to display anything of interest. Audio, very, very big, very important. Audio, podcasts, for argument's sake, can be created to other users to download. And video, massive. As we know, next year, 2013, has already been predicted that 90%, 90, 90% of online traffic will come from video. So, you know, video such as this, what you're watching, Video content can be shared to engage, entertain, or educate. Now, amongst the most popular social media sites at the moment include uh, social media such as Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Google+. Um, the wikis we put, uh, Wikipedia, is absolutely massive and very, very useful. Uh, video sharing. As we all know, YouTube, you're probably going to be watching this on YouTube, absolutely massive. Photo sharing, Instagram, as we know, Facebook have recently uh, brought Instagram. Um, the, the, the kind of the new boy on the market is Pinterest, absolutely massive. Um, and obviously Flickr that's been around for some time. Um, news, um, you've got Dig um, and, well, Reddit, read it, depends how you like to say that, but dig and Reddit. Um, and online gaming, as we know, World of Warcraft, you know, absolutely massive, very successful, doing really well on that. Um, so that, to me, that like I say, is, as I said, is, 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 is explained in as plain English, is as simple as possible. Now, I know probably that covers pretty much, you know, what you already know, okay? And, and I appreciate that, because obviously people that are gonna be watching this are gonna be, uh, some are gonna be very experienced and very knowledgeable about social media, um, but obviously others aren't. But that to me, like I say, that's, that's explained in very, very plain English. I hope, I hope that helps. So next, the new approach to branding 
and communication, moving beyond marketing. That social media has paved the way to a more powerful communication channels for companies to publish their marketing messages, all without the ridiculous costs. Okay, and this is one of the biggest benefits. While we all know social networks are generally used by businesses to engage their target market and study consumer preferences and behaviours, the truth is it has other equally powerful features that you can incorporate into your marketing strategy with highly rewarding payoff. Seriously, it's incredible that thanks to social media over the last four years, it's really, really grown my business. And to be fair, I, I, you know, prior to that one, I used to do a lot of offline marketing, direct mail. I spent a lot of money, probably a lot of it was wasted. So for me, the online marketing, the internet marketing, the social media has been a massive, massive help um, to my business. One of the biggest reasons, as I said, is because of the cost. So, okay, here are other areas in your business that you can apply social media to drive success. And these are things um, that I think a lot of a lot of businesses are taking uh, for granted. So, first of all, customer service. One ideal example of this is Best Buy. With their Twelp Force, employees are employed to provide prompt assistance on issues and queries. Now, the ability to respond and react quickly is very critical in today's market especially in influencing and changing perceptions. Even if a concern has not been resolved immediately, customers will feel their issue were acknowledged and given attention in timely manner. And that's very, very important. You know, all this online stuff is, is fantastic, but this is what people take for granted. It's relationship building, it's customer service, okay? It's there for a reason. It's very, very important to remember that because as we all know now, customer service these days, sadly, is a lot of the time has gone out the window. Okay, so it's very, very critical that point. Internal communications and collaboration. Small and large organizations can largely benefit from social media in terms of file sharing, collaborative editing, and knowledge sharing. Yeah, things like, um, well, you know, just, um, God, I don't know. Even I say, I mean, I suppose things like Dropbox. I'm trying to think of some examples, but that that is so beneficial. You know, it's so so handy and very time consuming as well. Uh, sorry, it it saves a lot of time. Um, so that's very very important. Um, recruitment and retention. Well, a lot of employees today, believe it or not, decide on whether they want to be a part of an organization. Um, or not based on information um, that they've seen from social networks. It can also present a powerful tool in sourcing social channels that exist through professional networks. Now, you know, look at LinkedIn for argument's sake. I know a lot of people um, that, you know, have found jobs on there, but I've also found obviously businesses that, you know, have employed people from, from LinkedIn. That's a very, very powerful tool for that. But yet again, if your profile as a business is bad, why would somebody want to come and work for you? You know, you might have a fancy office and everything else, but this is how serious social media is being taken. You know, if your online presence looks bad, why would somebody want to come and work for you? Why would somebody want to partner with you and even consider doing business with you? Okay, so that's very, very important. Um, and I, and I hope that made sense because, again, people people and businesses are just concentrating on social media as a marketing tool and they take these three things for granted, okay? So next, moving on, understanding the social media ecosystem. And again, this is very, very important. So to effectively use social media to your full advantage, it is important to take the time and learn how the ecosystem works and the emerging habits of the social consumers. Consider each social networking site as a town and the ecosystem basically pertains to the infrastructure of that town. Now, your knowledge of the ecosystem will provide you a virtual map to navigate 
your way around the streets and how to find a path towards connecting with your target market. Now, according to the latest study con con excuse me, conducted by Chadwick Martin Bailey, consumers who are both Twitter followers and Facebook fans of a certain brand will not only recommend its products or services, but also buy from those brands. Now, in the same study, consumers reveal that brands that do not engage in social media are perceived as out of touch and outdated. So the main idea here is to focus your social media efforts on the power of the users who command influence within the social networks. However, it is also important to note that connecting with medium and light users will also help your business earn social proof and trust. Now let's just go back to you know the, one of the last um, sentences there because this is very powerful and this is what I say a lot to uh, potential clients of mine. Consumers reveal that brands that do not engage in social media are perceived as out of touch and outdated. So why is it then when you speak to a lot of businesses that they still don't feel that they need to be on this? That is a question that I will never understand because these facts, these stats are true. You know, if you're not as a business on social media, you're not going to be taken serious. Okay, so whether you're uh, a small business um, just starting out, a new business just starting out, uh, medium size, you know, or even a big corporate company, um, you know, you need to be on these guys, okay, because this is very, very important to your business, to your brand, okay, because if you're not on them, if you're not found on them, seriously, as I said, you're not going to be taken serious. Okay, so please think about this. It's very, very critical. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> now, these, uh, I've got three, three slides here, and these are very, very important. And again, these are the critical, um, probably three slides that I speak to people, because this is the scepticism. Con converting leads to sales, the return on investment of social media, the amount, the amount of businesses that I speak to, uh, Paul, you know, you never get your return on investment, you know, social media is not for that, you know, it's, it's a waste of time, waste of money, blah, blah, blah. But yet, what simply amazes me is the amount of businesses that I speak to that have got a website that have spent, you know, three, four thousand pounds, even more, you know, eight thousand pounds, a few thousand dollars um, on a website. And when I ask them, what is your return on investment from that website? They've never had it, you know, because it's not being used properly. But yet they were very keen and to them it was important to get a website. OK, so does that make sense? Yes, converting leads to sales, the return on investment of his social media. So let's go through this. It's three stages. Like any business, you naturally want to have a fair idea on the return of your investment in social media and not simply just jump right into it just because it's the popular thing to do. The return on investment cycle of social media can be separated into three stages. So let's touch on stage one, the launch. At this stage, 100% of your focus is on setting up accounts on the five social packs, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Now, okay, I appreciate, you know, while there are a number of other popular social networking sites, these five are considered to be the critically important ones, okay? You simply cannot afford not to have presence on all five platforms. Seriously, guys, you need to be on these. So, the launch stage is, excuse me, the launch stage is more of executional with a primary goal of getting started. Um, and here, here are the details of this stage, very, very simple. So one, the approach, executional, objectives, social media presence, focus, short term, 
results negligible okay and I hope that makes sense now at this point you won't be able to expect any significant impact or derived results okay so don't be worrying about it at this time as I said this is stage one this is about the launch and the next couple of slides will break it down it'll make more sense and over the next few videos that I do again will also make a lot more sense so let's just go through that again the launch stage is more of executional with a primary goal of getting started and here are the details of this stage one approach okay executional objectives social media presence Focus, short term, results, negligible. Okay, moving on to stage two. Stage two, management. This is the crucial bit, and this is where a lot of businesses are, are falling um, purely because of the management. They don't have time to do it, they don't know how to do it properly. Um, so, stage two, management. At this stage, about 60% of your company's efforts will be focused on developing the five social media sites. Now, only about 10% of the focus is directed towards the creative and brand offer, and 20% on setting up quantitative metrics like inbound links, traffic, Facebook likes, etc. Okay, the remaining 10% will be focused on qualitative metrics such as survey results, polls, um, and studying brand sentiment. Okay, so again, we'll look at these. Approach is tactical. Okay, and again, this is where businesses take for granted, or this is what they're missing and not doing correctly. Again, approach, tactical. Objectives, customer engagement. Focus, midterm, results, increased traffic so objectives look at this guy customer engagement this is crucial this is what people are doing wrong on social media okay customer engagement and results increase in traffic now I'm not going to mention a particular company but I was in a shopping center the other day and as I was walking through it was amazing because suddenly over the tunnel I heard one of these bing bong customer announcements um, I hope you like that by the way. <laughs> uh, please remember that you can find us on Twitter and Facebook for all your updates and this, that and everything else. I thought, oh, wow, fantastic, you know, great. Nice to see a shopping centre doing that. Come home, went to look on their website, they don't have a website. So to me, I kind of thought, well again, that is a prime example. They know they need to be on it, but yet they don't know why, you know. They're telling people to follow them on Facebook, on Twitter, but there's no website. So, you know, using social media is about leverage, driving and increasing traffic back to your website. That's where your products are, that's where your services are. That's what you need to do. Now, this shopping centre hasn't got a website, but they're using social media. Can you see how wrong that is, guys? Okay? Can you see how wrong that is? What's the point of it? Okay, I don't see the point of it. So again, I hope that makes sense. We we'll just go through those again. Stage two, management. Approach, tactical, objectives, customer engagement. Very, very important. Focus, midterm, results, increase in traffic. And last but not least, stage three, the optimization. Very, very important. So, during the optimization stage, 25% of the focus is on gaining more leverage on all five, so, excuse me, on all five social media platforms. 30% will be distributed to creative and brand offer development, as well as the quantitative and qualitative metrics. The other 25% of the focus will be directed to improving the conversion rates and the optimization of campaigns. The remaining 20% will be used to measure success of the campaign, which will be the basis of your return on investments. So let's look at this again. Approach, strategic. Objectives, 
social media return on investment. Focus, long term. Results, increase in revenue. Isn't that what every business wants? To see an increase in revenue. Yeah? So look, despite what many social media experts claim that return on investment on social media cannot be measured, there is actually a way to measure it. And it's knowing this way. This process will require a better understanding of your customer lifetime value, the CLV, or the average revenue generated by a customer during their entire engagement period with your products and services. Now this figure will be used to compare the results that have been generated on your campaign in social media. For example, if a typical customer spends about $10 every month on a particular product and that has been a loyal patron of a certain brand for about three years. This equates to the average customer lifetime value of $360. Most companies are willing to spend about 10% of their CLV for the acquisition of new customers. This means that they are willing to spend $36 to acquire a new customer who is expected to spend $360 all throughout his or her engagement with a brand. So if your social media efforts will cost you $36,000 for one full year and your campaign will be able to generate a thousand new customers every year, then you definitely, definitely have a clear winner on your hands. I hope that makes sense. It's very, very important that, okay? Very important. So again, looking at this, the approach, strategic, objectives, social media return on investment, because that's what every business wants. Focus, long-term, results, increase in revenue. So anyway, look, I really, really hope that you've enjoyed that video. Again, I know it's relatively quick, some very, very crucial uh, points in there, so you might have to watch it again. Um, there will be more videos coming up, obviously, to continue on this, and you know it will be going into more detail. Um, I hope that did make sense. I hope that wasn't too confusing for you. Um, but to me, you know, that's that's broken down, as I said, you know, in in clear, plain English. So anyway, this is me. This is Paul Wakefield from PaulWakefieldMarketing.com. Uh, check out our website, uh, you'll see more uh, free articles, audios, videos, various different uh, services that I offer. Um, please like and share this video, please, really, really appreciate that. Uh, leave your comment below, uh, whether it be good or bad, you know, obviously uh, any uh, constructive criticism is very, very important for me and the growth of my business. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to making the next video and, um, you know, speaking to you all soon. Thanks ever so much. Take care. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Bye bye.